category, RP Reinecke and Robin Halton in the dealer team Toyota Land Cruiser had some ground to make up on leaders Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leek. There were no prizes for guessing who was at the front of the motorcycle field. It was that man, Alfred Cox, again. And the AGA Panasonic Castrol KTM rider had already made up the 10 seconds he lost to Richard Manning on the time trial. Cox was busy opening up a gap over Manning, who was at the front of the 250 field on the dealer team Shell Yamaha. Not far behind the experienced Manning was another local rider in Lance Trithiwi on the Michelin Ferry Yamaha. The Thiwi was being chased by a former motocross star Gary Peterson on the Team Brasco FMF race in Kawasaki. One of the famous Peterson racing family, the youngest of the Petersons, switched to off-road racing this year and went into the Sugar Bell 400, leading the 250 championship. Rob Campbell on a privately entered Kawasaki was a surprise face amongst the front runners, but closing in on him was Darrell Curtis on the AGA Panasonic Castrol KTM. Curtis is not yet fully race fit after a recent accident, but was having a good run. Reigning 250 champion Alex Vowles on the Antelix Dairy KTM was busy working his way into the top five and led a gaggle of riders that included Brendan Crooks, brother of former circuit racing champion Trevor, and Elmer Simons, who was having a good run on another Shell Honda entry. Behind Simons, a flying grey McLaughlin who hails from the Free State was working his way through the field on yet another Shell Honda. Race leader Alfie Cox was running away with matters at the front of the field, but behind him there were any number of good battles starting to emerge. A good 500 class battle was going on between Marco Kavina on the Shimwells Yamaha and Sprimok Errol Dalton on the big shell Honda. Kavina and Dalton were ahead of reigning 200 class champion Rian Fanikerk on the AGA Panasonic Castrol KTM, who was having to fend off a string of riders that included Sean Labiskachny on a Yamaha, Greg Espinall on the Russell Campbell Racing Yamaha and Alan Julian on the Shell Honda. Back with the four-wheelers and problems for Dave Gurney and Hugh Turner in the GMP. They were stuck in an awkward spot in a sugarcane field with no way through for Arthur van Zuel and Mark O'Connor in a Toyota Hilux. Mark Corbett and Warwick Gerson almost added to the confusion when they arrived on the scene in the SVM Jeep. A little pushing and prodding from the Toyota Hilux finally gave Corbett and Kursen a little space and they continued on their merry way along with Van Zuel and O'Connor. Gurney and Turner had to wait until Good Samaritans Arthur Abraham and Stratford Furcht arrived on the scene in the big creepy crawly hugbug. With the aid of a tow rope, Abraham and Furcht pulled the stricken GMP to safety. Being good Samaritans does have its drawbacks though, and while Abraham and Furcht were shepherding Gurney and Turner to safety, a couple of other competitors, including the ex Neil Woolrich Nissan Sani, now driven by Derek De Bruyne, took the chance to move ahead of the creepy crawly pair. At the front of the field, the Chepek father and son combination were back in the lead in the V Motors race car. Both Derek Penway and Books Carolyn had dropped down the field, with the Chepek starting to take control of matters. Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake were still running at the front of the production vehicle category in the Castrol Toyota Hilux, but on corrected time were being caught by Arpi Reinecke and Robin Halton in the dealer team Toyota Land Cruiser. Nardis Alberts and Warren Klaassen were still going well in the Rapsa Raceco and had picked up a string of places to be second on the road in the special vehicle category. It was also turning into a good event for local crew Mark Sorua and Cedric Fryer, who were moving through the field in an aging but still highly effective Chenoweth. Behind Sorua and Fryer, another Chenoweth in the hands of Jojo Tanks Barberspun 500 winner Shamir Variawa and Liko Khan was doing some low flying with a pair also starting to ease their way towards the top five. Although they were running behind Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake on the road, reigning champions Arpi Reinecke and Robin Houghton were starting to edge away from the Castrol Toyota pair on corrected time. The dealer team Toyota Land Cruiser was sounding crisp, with Reinecke and Houghton looking to be on their way to another win. 
while Reineke and Houghton were cruising along, another typically steady drive from Richard Carolyn had seen him sky his way through the field in a single-seater lubrication equipment race car. The quicker quads were by now in among the back markers in the motorcycle section, Anas Buta on the Polaris taking the gap here given to him by one of the regional competitors. A steady ride had taken Johan Steenkamp to the front of Class K for standard quads and he looked set for a place in the top 10. Cornelius van der Walt was chasing after Steenkamp and decided to have a little fun with our cameraman. With the place in the top 10 beckoning, Leon van Gerlen was trying to make up for lost ground on a Yamaha blaster, while Athol Marriott Watson on the belt-driven Polaris 400 was gradually dropping back. Nardis Alberts and Warren Clarsen were ready to rejoin the fray after a service halt, but it was the end of the road for Arthur Abraham and Stratford Fucht in the creepy crawly hugbug. A fuel starvation problem put them out of the running, but there were no such worries for motorcycle leader Alfie Cox on the AGA Panasonic Castrol KTM. Cox was steadily pulling away from Richard Manning on the dealer team Shell Yamaha. Manning was losing ground to Cox, but at the tight grip on second place, with Gray McLaughlin making a determined effort to catch the Natalian. Local rider Lars Kothiwi on the Michelin Perry Yamaha was still having a good ride, but was being caught by Errol Dalton on the Shell Honda. Dalton was now running second to Cox in the 500 class, with the ever-spectacular Daryl Curtis enjoying himself on the AGA Panasonic Castrol KTM and certain of a top 10 place in only his second race of the season. A solid performance had taken Sean Labiskachny on a Yamaha into the fringes of the top five. Labiskachny was being chased all the way by Brendan Crooks on the privately entered Honda, and with Rian van Niekerk falling by the wayside, Clayton Enslin led the 200 class on the FMF racing Elna Fox Kawasaki. At the front of the special vehicle category, it was all over bar the shouting for Franz Chepek Sr. and Junior. They were on their way to their second win of the season in the V Motors race car, with a dogfight developing behind them. Eric Pinway and Craig Jackson in the Quickfoot race car were main players in the battle for second place, with one or two wet sections in the final stages of the event causing a few problems. Richard Carolyn had not put a wheel wrong in the single-seater lubrication equipment race car. Also involved in this struggle were the impressive Mark Surua and Cedric Fryer in the Chenoweth. John Rowe and Andrew Davis were in with a shout for a top five placing in the Bearing Man JRE and were involved in a duel with Richard Schilling and Ashley Thorne in the Motortech Gymco. A comfortable win for the Chipex with an 18-minute advantage over Richard Carolyn who finally got the better of the battle for second place. Local crews also came good with a trio of Natalians in the next three places. We carried on and we kept the lead and then my son carried on driving the second half of the race and he kept it going and um, we won overall eventually and in class. The battle in the production vehicle category produced late drama. Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leek were still first on the road in a Castrol Toyota Hilux but on corrected time had dropped behind RP Reineke and Robin Houghton. Then disaster struck for Reineke and Houghton with a pair stuck in the mud for 14 minutes. In a more than encouraging debut for the Mitsubishi Pajero, the tail crew Neil Woolridge and Paul Vermark brought the Pajero home in third place and had a 15-minute advantage over Cliff Barker and Malcolm Hubert in the Penzoil Land Rover. Despite the string of trials and tribulations, Llewellyn Anthony and Chris Birkin brought their turbo diesel Toyota Hilux through into fifth place. Harpy Reineke and Robin Houghton's late encounter with the mud sealed the first win of the season for Cassie Kutsia and Richard Leake in the Castrol Toyota Hilux. A great debut too for the Mitsubishi Pajero. Yeah, no, we had a really good race. Um, steady uh, and the Hilux performed magnificently. We didn't have to uh, stop or waste any time for anything. We kept on the route the whole time and uh, just had a very nice clean race. On the motorcycle front, another win for Alfie Cox, making it three out of three for the Natalian this season. Cox won the open class, the 250 class went to Richard Manning and the 200 category to Clayton Enslin. After a lean spell this season, Vickers van Deventer finally got it all right on the Jojo Tanks Honda and romped away with a quad category. With seven minutes to spare over Christopher van Amerwe on the Team Johannesburg Yamaha, it was a comfortable win for van Deventer. 
A solid ride brought Paul Breckel into fourth place on the Brasco FMF Racing Yamaha Banshee. A first win this season for Vickers van Deventer and the Jojo Tanks Honda 4 tracks. The next four places all went to riders mounted on Yamaha Banshees, with van Deventer a very happy man at the end of the race. Well, the route was very time. One of the hardest races that I've ever had. All that I want to say is for Jojo Tanks a very thank you. I want for Yamaha to H O N D A Honda. Honda is the winner. Here's the first race. Winter.